Welcome to module 2.7, wastewater-based variant tracking for SARS-CoV-2. This presentation is part of the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit from CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Brian Lowe, and I am the Chief Innovation Officer with the City of Burlington, Vermont. This module describes the detection of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in municipal wastewater to provide early warning of increased community transmission and to inform clinical specimen selection for viral whole genome sequencing. Be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, which include a combination of case studies and training materials to help you get started supplementing epidemiology with genome sequence data. One difficulty in tracking COVID-19 has been the high proportion of asymptomatic and unreported infections making the total community burden of disease uncertain. Scientists recognized early in the COVID-19 pandemic that about 50% of individuals infected with SARS-CoV-2 shed viral particles in their feces that could be detected by targeted molecular assays. This shedding happens very early in both symptomatic and asymptomatic infections, as well as in both children and adults. The viral genetic RNA can be detected in wastewater making untreated municipal wastewater an efficient pooled fecal sample representing community level or even sub-community level infection burden if strategically sampled from within the collection system. Because of this, many municipalities around the globe began monitoring SARS-CoV-2 RNA levels in wastewater to supplement disease surveillance. Wastewater surveillance is not a new idea and can be described as the strategic sampling and testing for pathogens or other health targets in wastewater to better understand trends in disease burden and spread within a community. Wastewater surveillance presents several key advantages for supporting the public health response to COVID-19. First, it provides an efficient system for collecting pooled samples representing community populations of hundreds, thousands, or even millions of residents. Most toilet flushes into sewers in America arrive at wastewater treatment facilities within hours. Collection networks can be strategically sampled to assess the burden of disease with even more granularity at the neighborhood or sub-community level. Second, since wastewater surveillance is not impacted by healthcare seeking behaviors or access, it does not matter whether people go to the doctor or if clinical testing capacity is limited. Finally, wastewater surveillance is fast, capable of providing community level data within five to seven days compared to approximately two weeks needed for clinical indicators such as case counts or hospitalizations. There are even technologies being evaluated for on-site same-day testing of building level wastewater samples to screen for infection. For these reasons, wastewater surveillance can provide a robust measure of community infection and complement existing COVID-19 surveillance systems. Throughout the pandemic, researchers around the world have been rapidly working to demonstrate the usefulness of wastewater surveillance for the global COVID-19 response. Interpreting these data and understanding their limitations remains an active area of development. That is why in September 2020, CDC launched the National Wastewater Surveillance System, abbreviated NWSS, to support state, local, territorial, and tribal implementations of wastewater surveillance. In addition to technical support, NWSS serves as a national data repository and an analytic engine to coordinate the collection and interpretation of wastewater surveillance data. The program's website hosts an extensive collection of resources on sampling strategies, testing methods, data reporting, and interpretation. CDC also organizes multiple communities of practice to support information sharing among public health departments, laboratories, and wastewater utilities seeking to implement surveillance programs. More information about NWSS can be found via the link at the bottom of this slide in the toolkit webpage. In the summer of 2020, the city of Burlington, Vermont began exploring the utility of wastewater surveillance as a part of an integrated approach to mitigating the spread of COVID-19 among its population of about 43,000 residents. Program development began in July, motivated by two primary concerns. First, the potential rise in caseloads as school resumed in the fall and college students at the University of Vermont returned to campus from across the United States. And second, the lack of equitable access to limited testing resources, which could result in lagging case identification, particularly among groups disproportionately affected by COVID-19. 
As we just discussed, wastewater surveillance can address both concerns by providing fast community level indicators of infection trends, independent of healthcare seeking behavior or access. City officials also determined that implementing and monitoring a wastewater testing program for Burlington could be achieved at a relatively low cost. By utilizing a commercial test company, the program would require some upfront staff time, but limited total time once online and note that this approach may not work well for all jurisdictions. City officials in Burlington designed Burlington's testing strategy and implementation plan based on the existing wastewater system and its capacity for evaluating sewer sheds at the treatment plant level, as well as within the collection system corresponding to select neighborhood areas. The sewer shed network is serviced by three separate water, wastewater treatment plants, referred to simply as the North Plant, the East Plant, and the Main Plant. The approximate sewer shed areas of the three treatment plants are highlighted on the map of the city in this slide. With the help of a commercial vendor, city officials further mapped Burlington's sewer collection system and identified sampling locations that would allow the North and Main Plant's catchment areas to be further divided into approximate neighborhood areas, which were deemed sub sewer shed areas. The East Plant already served a small catchment area and so was not subdivided. Once mapping was complete and sampling locations were determined, city officials selected an initial testing schedule of two times per week at each wastewater treatment plant to establish a baseline. The city planned to increase testing frequency to three times per week at each plant and to add sub sewer shed testing if detected concentration of SARS-CoV-2 RNA increased over initial levels observed when the program came online. All wastewater samples are collected on a 24 hour composite to minimize the effects of variable flow observed at treatment plants throughout the day. After collection, samples are shipped overnight to a commercial laboratory for digital droplet RT-PCR testing to, to quantify SARS-CoV-2 viral concentration by targeting the N1 region of the nucleocapsid gene. The overall turnaround time between collection and results is approximately two days. Burlington's wastewater surveillance program came online in August of 2020. City officials coordinated with the Vermont Department of Health to evaluate how to adjust testing frequency in response to detection of SARS-CoV-2 RNA at any of the treatment plants. Together, we outlined six potential scenarios that would prompt changes in wastewater testing frequency, sub sewer shed testing, communications to residents, or additional COVID-19 clinical testing capacity. Two of these scenarios involve non-detection of SARS-CoV-2 RNA in wastewater, despite reporting of clinical cases from the same areas. We evaluated clinical case counts relative to the levels reported when the program started in August, which were approximately 10 confirmed clinical cases per day for the city of Burlington. Although case counts supplied by the Vermont Department of Health are stratified by sewer shed, we were aware that of that Correlating case counts with RNA concentrations in wastewater faces many limitations. At the time, we were still not certain that wastewater would provide useful surveillance data, and we wanted a protocol to outline terminating the project if necessary. Initially, SARS-CoV-2 RNA was detected only sporadically in wastewater. But in November 2020, both the SARS-CoV-2 RNA concentration in wastewater and clinical case counts in Burlington began to rise, prompting the city to begin regularly sampling sub sewer sheds to identify which neighborhoods may have higher levels of infection and should receive increased COVID-19 testing access. In November, 2020, uh, increases in SARS-CoV-2 RNA concentrations can be seen on this plot which shows a trend analysis that can be performed with wastewater surveillance data. The chart plots the concentration of SARS-CoV-2 RNA as gene copies per liter measured by digital droplet RT-PCR on a, log, uh, a logarithmic scale, sampled over time at each of the city's three wastewater treatment plants. Note that these are raw numbers and comparison between individual plants requires normalization to account for differences in flow rate, total organic load, or population size served by the sewer sheds, for example. The concentration at all three plants rose in November and through the holidays, with the steepest rise observed in the samples taken from the East Plant. Many of the residents served by the East Plant are university students who went home between mid-November and February. Another sharp increase in SARS-CoV-2 RNA concentration 
was observed immediately after university students returned for the spring semester. Analyzing case data by age confirmed that the cases this wave were concentrated in young adults, as by this point, many of the oldest Vermonters had been vaccinated. Wastewater surveillance data provided a valuable early indicator of disease risk in the community, which informed other parts of Burlington's integrative strategy for mitigating the spread of COVID-19. When wastewater surveillance indicated increasing concentration of SARS-CoV-2 RNA over multiple weeks, the city responded with a number of actions directed toward neighborhoods with affected sewer sheds. These included alerting nursing homes within the sewer sheds about the heightened risk of infection, alerting leaders of organizations serving non-English speakers, adding new testing locations within affected neighborhoods, augmenting the State Department of Health response, and increasing communications to the wider public about the COVID-19 risk, enabling residents to make informed decisions about protective measures, including vaccination. For example, the rise of SARS-CoV-2 RNA detected in mid-November 2020, shown earlier, primarily affected two neighborhoods, including one with a concentration of non-English speakers among Burlington's refugee resettlement population. The city, although it has no public health department, received permission from the state health department to organize additional testing clinics in these neighborhoods. The city also reached out directly to congregate living facilities in these sewer sheds to make them aware of the possible cases and to take stricter precautions where possible. At least two senior centers that responded to early warnings with operational changes were able to catch positive cases and contain potential outbreaks far earlier than they would have under normal testing protocols in use at the time. This slide includes some examples of how city officials communicated the heightened risk and response actions to residents using both social and traditional media outlets. News of a more transmissible variant of the SARS-CoV-2 arrived in December of 2020. The variant of concern known initially as B117, later designated alpha by the WHO, includes key mutations on the spike gene. See module 1.4 of the toolkit for additional information about this and other emerging variants of SARS-CoV-2 and their mutations. The case study in module 2.6 also presents an example of how some variants can be identified in clinical specimens. Burlington's wastewater surveillance program was modified to include additional RT-PCR targets specific to two characteristic mutations in this variant, a deletion at position 6970 and an amino acid substitution at position 501. Wastewater samples collected from each of the treatment plants were tested for these additional targets once per week starting on January 13th, 2021. It is important to note that these spike gene mutations are not specific to B117 and therefore, their detection by wastewater surveillance can only suggest, but not confirm, that the variant is circulating in the community. At the time, statewide capacity for genomic sequencing in Vermont was limited to approximately 16 clinical samples per week, meaning that wastewater surveillance was likely to detect mutations associated with the variant more quickly. These data could then be used to inform the selection of clinical specimens for sequencing to confirm the local circulation of B117. As we've discussed throughout this module, Wastewater surveillance offers many advantages for supporting the public health response to COVID-19, including the detection of new SARS-CoV-2 variants. However, it is necessary to acknowledge some caveats and limitations to this approach. In this case study, variant tracking involves using RT-PCR to target specific known mutations associated with a variant of concern. That means detection only indicates presence of the target mutation and not presence of a particular variant of concern, whose genotype is defined by a combination of mutations. SARS-CoV-2 genomes shed into wastewater sewer shed tend to fragment so that samples contain a mixture of all different variants and mutations present among infected members of the community. The pooling that makes wastewater samples great for disease surveillance simultaneously makes linking multiple variant defining mutations difficult. Methods for sequencing SARS-CoV-2 directly from wastewater samples are available, but they are expensive, much less sensitive than targeted approaches, and may still be confounded by fragmentation and mixing of viral genotypes. Quantitatively monitoring multiple mutations associated with known variants can potentially provide information on trends in variant infections within a community. For now, however, these data cannot be used to determine the relative contributions of different variants to clinical case burden although scientists are still exploring this question. 
In December 2020, wastewater testing in Burlington had already proven useful in shifting resources and anecdotally in impacting resident behavior. In January, faced with the uncertain risks of new variants, city officials decided to expand the wastewater surveillance program to detect mutations associated with B117, or alpha, a variant of concern. They hoped that detecting these mutations and alerting the public would help reduce the likelihood of surging infections due to increased transmissibility. On January 13th, the city of Burlington began testing the wastewater for two additional spike mutations associated with B117. One sample collected in January returned a low level of one mutation, but otherwise the results were negative. Then on February 10th, 2020, uh, 2021, both the N501Y and deletion of the 6970 position mutations were detected in a sample collected from the main plant February 8th. These results were announced publicly the next day, both in Burlington by the mayor and in coordination with a broader statewide announcement. The city took immediate action, delivering a combination of citywide and targeted alert messages, as well as distributing protective equipment for essential workers and local businesses. At the time, the Vermont Department of Health did not have the in-state capacity for SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequencing and relied on the Massachusetts State Public Health Laboratory for sequencing. Vermont sent about 16 samples per week to Massachusetts, selecting based on criteria that included detection of variant-associated mutations by wastewater surveillance. On February 11th, the Vermont Department of Health epidemiologists began requesting clinical specimens from Burlington residents located within the main sub-sewer shed where the variant associated mutations have been detected. No variants of concern were identified among the clinical specimens sent to the Massachusetts State Public Health Laboratory on February 16th or 23rd for sequencing. Around the same time, a wastewater sample taken from the East plant on February 21st tested positive for the variant mutations by RT-PCR. East plant sub, the East Plant sewer shed serves most of the University of Vermont campus. On February 26th, the Vermont Department of Health epidemiologists began requesting clinical specimens from the University of Vermont Student Health Clinic located within the East sewer shed. The Student Health Clinic began diverting all clinical specimens from symptomatic suspected cases with a positive antigen test to the Vermont Department of Health laboratory for diagnostic RT-PCR evaluation for genome sequencing. On March 1st, the Vermont Department of Health confirmed one clinical specimen exhibited the S gene target failure using the TACPATH RT-PCR assay consistent with B117. An aliquot of the original specimen, clinical specimen was then sent to the Massachusetts State Public Health Laboratory where sequencing confirmed the presence of the B117 variant on March 8th almost four weeks after the initial detection of the variant mutations by wastewater surveillance. This phylogenetic tree computed by Andrew Lang at the Massachusetts State Public Health Laboratory illustrates the placement of the detected B117 among other contemporaneous but unrelated specimens collected throughout Vermont. Interestingly, one of those other specimens contained the E484K spike protein mutation which is associated with other variants of concern and variants of interest, including B1351, also known as beta, and P1, also known as gamma. The E484K mutation has only rarely been reported in B117. Additional sequences of B117 were identified among clinical specimens collected in Burlington during the weeks that followed. Although the variant was likely spreading through the community, its increased frequency among sequence specimens was also due in part to focus surveillance efforts within the East Plant sewer shed, where it was first confirmed. The phylogenetic tree shown here suggests that at least three of the sequence confirmed cases with B117 were connected based on their genetic similar similarity. Another clinical specimen was identified as B1429, which CDC classified as a variant of concern a few weeks later. Another specimen bearing the E484K mutation was also found. The Vermont Department of Health took action by coordinating with local officials in Burlington to implement control measures in hopes of curtailing the spread of more transmissible variants like B117. They also began conducting statewide efforts in areas of high disease incidence now that the variant had been confirmed in Vermont. With wastewater surveillance in place in Burlington, Vermont Department of Health was able to focus their limited sequencing capacity on other areas of the state. A phylogenetic tree containing all the SARS-CoV-2 variants detected in Vermont is calculated weekly by the CDC SPHERES Consortium from public sequence data and available at the link provided here at the bottom of this slide. 
Following the detection of variant mutations in Burlington's wastewater and reports of B117 in neighboring states, University of Vermont student health staff acted quickly to decrease on-campus transmission even before the presence of B117 could be confirmed by clinical specimen sequencing. The university responded by increasing isolation and quarantine capacity while separating isolate, isolation and quarantine housing, increasing contact tracing capacity, and increasing student testing from once to twice a week. The university's response highlights the potential of wastewater surveillance to provide early warning of changes in SARS-CoV-2 infection burden among the community much more quickly than clinical indicators or clinical specimen sequencing. One sequencing of clinical specimen had confirmed that B117 was circulating in Burlington, wastewater surveillance could be used to monitor trends in multiple mutations associated with known variants. Indeed, the variant associated mutations increased concurrently multiple times in all three sewer sheds uh, through April 2021. Building on this success, city officials expanded the wastewater surveillance program to include more spike gene mutations associated with known variants of concern, including the E484K mutation already observed among sequenced clinical specimens. Surveillance testing for these mutations began on March 29th, but retrospective analysis conducted by the Vermont Department of Health detected the E484K mutation in Burlington wastewater samples collected as early as February 2021. Burlington's expanded wastewater surveillance program has enabled the city and state officials to track the different trajectories of SARS-CoV-2 spike gene mutations associated with known variants, such as B117. As of June 2021, the E484K mutation has not increased in wastewater like the B117 associated mutations. In summary, the wastewater program in Burlington, Vermont allowed the city and state an additional layer of surveillance for COVID-19 beyond diagnostic testing. Fast wastewater testing turnaround meant that city officials could warn of impending case increases and deploy resources to areas with higher virus levels and provide specific warnings to vulnerable populations. By expanding wastewater surveillance testing to include RT-PCR targets for specific mutations associated with known variants of concern, city officials were alerted to the likely circulation of the more transmissible B117 variant nearly a month before confirmation by clinical specimen sequencing. This early warning prompted city and statewide officials to take responses, including on a university campus served by the wastewater sewer shed where the mutations were first detected in wastewater. Wastewater surveillance was critical in focusing the Vermont Department of Health outreach activities and prioritizing clinical specimens for sequencing, which remain limited to approximately 16 clinical specimens per week statewide. As a result, the presence of B117 was confirmed by sequencing a clinical specimen collected within the wastewater sewer shed where the mutations were first detected. Wastewater surveillance and variant mutation tracking continues in Burlington to inform trend analysis for infections by known variants of concern. The successful implementation of Burlington's wastewater surveillance program is the result of a multi-agency and public-private collaboration with the city's Department of Innovation and Technology and the Department of Public Works, the Water Division. The city team is particularly grateful to our colleagues at the Vermont Department of Health for great support on this project and throughout the pandemic. Additional thanks are due to the Massachusetts State Public Health Laboratory, which handled the SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequencing, GoAgua, which provided technical assistance in sub-sewer shed mapping for Burlington, GT Molecular for performing commercial RT-PCR testing, and the University of Vermont Student Health for selecting clinical specimens for sequencing. This concludes module 2.7, part two of this toolkit, contains case studies that review the use of genomics in response to COVID-19. Please visit the COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit page where you will find further reading on this topic, as well as a short survey to provide feedback about this module. On the toolkit uh, page, you can also subscribe to our mailing list and receive announcements as new modules and material are released. Thank you.